allowing us to uh, broadcast the news of our uh, community, what's going on, instructional uh, information about starting uh, a new small business. And it's obvious that uh, uh, Andy at the and the folks at uh, at uh, Stickham uh, understand the importance of bringing information to the Stickham community about uh, starting a, a new business because it is so very, very important. If you were uh, listening to me uh, over the weekend, and if you weren't listening to me over the weekend, that's okay. Yeah, you can see, uh, you can go to YouTube slash Small Biz David, and I recorded uh, our uh, broadcast, our stick hand broadcast. I did them at, on my YouTube channel, uh, as well as, and even better, go to davidsbarter.com and register to become a, a member of the community, and you can see uh, all the almost 300 uh, YouTube videos that I have done. Some of them were done on stick hand, some were not done on stick hand. I, uh, since I did my broadcast uh, over the weekend, uh, I've been getting uh, a lot of correspondence uh, in response to just the concept of, of starting a business, lots of questions, uh, people asking, well, uh, can, I, uh, can I start a business? And, uh, I'm 16 years old, I'm 20 years old, I'm 45 years old. Uh, Actually, um, there is uh, a, an article that uh, I was sent over the weekend, and I'm, I want to share that with you because it's about this topic, uh, inspiring the next generation of America's entrepreneurs. And that's really what I'm doing. I'm inspiring the next generation. Uh, age does not matter. I'm going to get into this article from the SBA, but but uh, age does that does not really matter. It's the spirit of, of of wanting to do something, of having a business, of generating some money. You know, when we were, um, I, I guess probably the youngest entrepreneurs uh, are those individuals who have a lemonade stand uh, out in front of their house or down the corner. Did all of you have a, a lemonade stand at uh, one time in your life? Uh, I did, and uh, I remember also when we were growing up, uh, my brother uh, was the major, uh, well, I was the major promoter and marketer. He actually put it all together, but we had a uh, I don't know what we had. It was it was in our garage, it was out in our backyard, and it was uh, a, a whole litany of things for uh, children to do. When they came to our house in our garage, we actually showed uh, movies, cartoons out in the backyard. We had a little miniature golf course, and I'm sure we had a lemonade stand, and whatever it was that we did. A, we had a lot of fun doing it, uh, and B, uh, we made... Uh, enough money that we could uh, run up to the uh, corner store uh, at the end of the day and buy any of the candy that we wanted. We had enough money to buy lots of candy and uh, baseball cards. We were, our, our family was, was big on collecting baseball cards, and I see them. I don't know how big of a, of a hobby that is anymore, but we used to get, I don't know, about 10 cards in a package and a, and a piece of bubble gum. I think probably now you uh, get three cards in a package and a half a piece of bubble gum. I, I don't know where I haven't seen them in a, in a, in a very long time. But we, we all, uh, growing up, had that uh, spirit of uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, I know as I grew a little bit older, uh, I was a babysitter. And uh, boy, did I babysit for some horrible kids. 
it uh, it was a way for me to raise some money, and um, in the case of babysitting, it also uh, helped uh, a neighbor uh, so that uh, she and her husband could be in their their small business and keep the hour uh, keep it open later at night. So age age doesn't really matter, and and uh, I was very very fortunate uh, that. When I was 24 years old, my grandfather told me, didn't ask me, told me that I would buy a business from my mother, his daughter, and he also told me that I would pay $10,000 for the business, age 24. And I didn't think too much about it because it was my grandfather who made the uh, demand, not request, made the demand to me. And I didn't question uh, what he was doing. But in retrospect, as I look back, thank you, Papa, for uh, making me do that. It was really uh, the beginning of, of what was going to be a, a wonderful, wonderful journey for me, the journey of entrepreneurship. Digressing for a moment, as you know that I'd like to do, uh, one of the things that we are doing in the community uh, right now, there's 112 days left in 2012. Oh, there's the number 12. 112 days left in 2012. And as you know, and you can see uh, up on the screen, that uh, we are offering 10 thousand entrepreneurs uh, the opportunity to test and have a complimentary landing page which can be equivalent to starting a business because you start to generate cash flow that would be the purpose well your, 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 your page would either generate leads to do something you might want them to sign up for a newsletter uh, you might want them to follow you on YouTube, uh, whatever it might be. Whatever it might be. A landing page has many, many different uh, uh, potential uses. And it's been very, very exciting to me as I created the concept. Uh, I now have a dozen uh, landing pages uh, in the community which uh, generate cash flow. Uh, and so, each one of those, in, in, in a sense, can represent a different business. They're underneath the umbrella, but uh, it's, it's a different venture. And I try to do different things. And I think creatively, what can I do uh, to uh, generate cash flow from a landing page? I know that the concept of the landing page is solid. It's a very optimized. It's very Googleized. And so it's just a matter of uh, being creative to come up with uh, an idea for a product, a service, and I've got both product and services uh, going as landing pages. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because it gives me the opportunity to uh, test an idea see if it works, make it work. If it doesn't, fix it. And if it can't, I can't make it work at all, get rid of it and start another one. That's been the most exciting thing uh, that uh, I have done because it also has allowed me to go back in time uh, with friends that I have done business with over the years and go back and do today with today's social marketing, social network technology versus what we did in one case. Um, I started a business relationship with an insurance company in 1994. So that was, what, 18 years ago. And I used my skills, my marketing skills from 18 years ago to 
work with this company to market and sell uh, one of their products. Uh, and actually, it was a product of theirs that has always fascinated me. Uh, it was an insurance product specifically designed for youth. It was actually called their juvenile policy, specifically si designed for children under age 25 so that a parent, a grandparent, could buy this product for their child or grandchild. Millions of people have bought this product over the years. And back in those days, back in 1994, the way that we generated leads or people who were interested in buying it were on television. Uh, we, Glenn and I, well, Glenn uh, created the campaign. And I managed the uh, incoming phone calls. I didn't personally. We had uh, two or 300 people. Uh, that were taking phone calls for the product. We weren't calling you. You saw an ad on television and you were calling us. Uh, or back in those days, uh, Glenn sent out 300 pieces of direct mail, which I, I still get his direct mail. And it's, uh, it, it's changed. The look has changed over the years. The product is the same. Here was uh, here's a, a direct mail piece I just got uh, last week. Uh, now, it's kind of interesting. Uh, I bought this product. Well, uh, let me step back. Uh, so as I was putting together landing pages, I, uh, I uh, contacted Glenn and said, Glenn, you know, I've always was really, uh, I really liked uh, that product of yours. Uh, not only did it provide protection for my children or, or other people's children at that time, it, uh, there's a, in, in insurance, uh, there's a concept called guaranteed insurability. Guaranteed insurability. Uh, and uh, once you buy that product, once I buy that product for, uh, for my sons as I did, uh, six months ago, seven months ago. And yes, uh, well, at that time, uh, both my sons were under 25 years of age. Uh, Jordan, I bought it actually one month before Jordan's 25th birthday, so I got in just under the wire with him. But it, it guarantees that any time in their lifetime, God forbid something should happen to them, uh, they become disabled, and maybe traditional insurance uh, would, would reject them because of a condition that they might have. The fact that I bought that product for them will always guarantee that they can buy insurance. And to me, uh, that was more important than uh, the actual uh, uh, policy itself. Uh, I bought for Jordan and Sam uh, each a $30,000, which was the maximum I could buy. Uh, life insurance policy. But this time when I bought it, I bought it with the technology and the social marketing of our community. And it was probably the first, well, for sure it was the first insurance product uh, that was sold in the community. And, the, and I had to laugh as, as, as I was putting it together. So what happens is you go to the page and you click on um, you click on the uh, uh, the product, and it then takes you from David's Barter Community to Globe Life's website. So you're actually the left our community goes right to them, and then you go through the process on their servers about you know. The, and it's a very simple policy. I think there's only um, there's only three questions uh, that are asked, and uh, it, it took it took me probably uh, ten minutes to buy insurance policies for both of the boys. And it uh, 
the funny thing about it was that the technology uh, that uh, Glenn is using today is the same technology uh, that he was using 10 years ago uh, to, to, to buy the uh, product. And you actually had to, to use Internet Explorer as your browser to get to his website. And uh, in a sense, that was going to make it more difficult for the product to be sold because you could only get to his website uh, with an, uh, using Internet Explorer as your browser. And as we know, it's a, it's a popular, uh, it's a popular uh, browser, but uh, more people are using Chrome and, and uh, Firefox and uh, I suppose uh, Chrome and Firefox. Probably, uh, well, they're, they're certainly two very large browsers. And Chrome is, uh, as you know, uh, uh, owned by Google. And so I, I, I launch in Chrome uh, whenever I possibly can. I test in other browsers, but I, I use Chrome more so myself uh, because I want Google to get uh, as much information as they possibly can about what I do online. Because what I do online directly impacts the search results uh, that I get. Uh, we have, we've, I've gotten some very uh, interesting comments uh, from uh, a, a segment that I did over the weekend. I don't know if you heard it or not. Uh, I compared my search results on Google uh, versus my search results on Bing. Uh, Bing just last week launched a television campaign to promote Bing as a search engine. Bing is owned by Microsoft uh, and has a very close partnership with Facebook. Uh, Google is Google and Google uh, owns 70% uh, market share. 70% of everybody doing a search for something on the internet searches in, in Google, which is an unbelievable number. And, and uh, uh, we know other people have, uh, have uh, tried to, to gain market share. Uh, Yahoo, who at one time uh, had more market share than Google did, uh, they are uh, quickly going by the wayside in search. However, um, something fantastic is happening at Yahoo, fantastic for Yahoo. Uh, Melissa Meyer, who was very instrumental in Google search when she was working at Google, is now at Yahoo as their CEO. And it'll be very exciting to see what, what, what they can do as a, as a search engine. Uh, but anyways, uh, we, got some, we got some comments. And, and uh, this whole concept of browsers and computers, they really do make a difference when you're building a, uh, when you're building a web community as we have. We've tested everything that we do. In, on different computers. I actually have one, two, three, four. I have four computers right here. That, uh, and that doesn't include uh, my, my, my Android phone. So I have five, five computers uh, at easy, easy access here. So I test on different computers. I test on different browsers uh, to see what the results are. And in fact, uh, you, you must. You, you, you have to have an understanding how your website is going to work. And, and to that point, uh, the most exciting uh, and interesting concept that is going on right now is, is um, how much information uh, can we find on our phones, our smartphones. They've got to be smart. Can't be stupid. 
I actually um, do not use my phone for internet purposes. My smartphone, my Android phone. The reason I don't is uh, sitting as many hours a day as I do with four computers uh, all around me. Uh, uh, when I leave, uh, I don't want to uh, go to use my phone. I use my phone for a phone. I use my phone to send text messages, uh, right or wrong, and, and, and as a camera. Uh, right or wrong, those are basically the uh, the only uses I have for my phone. Now, <clears throat> many, many folks who have smartphones are using those phones more and more uh, for Internet purposes. And that's okay. One, one challenge I have is uh, how small things are on my screen. And... Uh, I can hardly read them. I have challenges reading them on my big screens. That may happen to you when you get to my age. So I, I, I don't use my uh, Android smartphone, which is really, really smart. I don't use it for uh, Internet stuff. Over the weekend, I also talked about, and you've heard me talk about it in the past, um, how important David's Barter community is going to become to a project uh, in uh, Nigeria. Uh, I met Humphrey Akinazu on Skype, uh, I don't know, seven, eight months ago. And I actually had an opportunity to have three meetings with Humphrey when I went to Rome. Finally met him in person. And as we were developing, uh, and I, I am Humphrey's partner on our community as a partner on a project that he is doing uh, in Nigeria. Right now, he actually left Rome uh, a week ago and is in Nigeria. And since he's been in Nigeria, we have not had, we've texted one another. Uh, we are trying to Skype one another, but he's having some connectivity issues. But Humphrey is developing a landing page himself in, while well, I'm helping him develop it, in David's Barter community. And he is going to then take that page. He has set up uh, a, a business concept uh, where he is going to be a learning development center for entrepreneurship in Nigeria. So he's developing his page, and then he's going to show other Nigerians how they can start a business with a landing page in David's Barter community. And so how exciting is that going to be? But he said to me very clearly, and we're not there yet, we're working on it, but uh, we, our, our community must work extremely well uh, on um, uh, on a phone, but what uh, what technology was it? I um, can't remember the uh, the tech. It's got a keyboard. I've never used it. Oh, I can't think of the name, but many many people have it, use it. <clears throat> but the fact is, that's how Nigerians uh, communicate on the internet is through their phone. So our community must be able to work on a mobile phone. And so we are, uh, we're, we're almost, I mean, actually it does work. Uh, Android technology, I can get on our site, uh, David Sparter, and do anything that, uh, that I need to do on Android. But we have to make sure that it works for the technology uh, that the Nigerians are using. So that's, that's a challenge that we have. And you know what? <laughs> Answering enough. That's the biggest challenge that Facebook has right now, is making sure that Facebook works well uh, mobily. There, I guess, uh, the percentage of people who actually use their Facebook uh, mobily is huge. I think more people are, are Facebooking uh, on their phones 
then on a PC or a Mac. Uh, I think that's the case. And also they have to figure out their biggest challenge is how to monetize uh, all that activity on a, on a phone. So uh, back to inspiring the next generation of America's entrepreneurs. Uh, I made some allusions to the next generation. Uh, the SBA, and you can find this uh, at their website. I talk about their website all the time because there's more information about small business on that website, sba.gov, than any website. Uh, the SBA, including ours, although ours is uh, a different kind of information, uh, as you know, most of our information is actually communicated with videos uh, as opposed to people reading something. Uh, we find that to be uh, a better means of communication. Uh, the SBA is working hard to make sure small business owners and entrepreneurs have the access to capital they need to start and grow their business. Uh, I am reading from their website, uh, sba.gov slash community slash blogs. I just got this today. Uh, this resulted in a record lending year in 2011 when the SBA supported $30 billion in loans to cover uh, to lo of loans to over 60,000 small businesses. And while we've made great progress, we know there's more work to be done. One area we are focused on is opening the doors of entrepreneurship to more communities and more demographics. Uh, thank you for the SBA doing that. And I will end uh, this segment with uh, the comment. If you go to davidsbarter.com slash entrepreneurs, you will see that for the next 112 days, uh, David's Barter community is uh, supporting a contest. The there are going to be eight winners coming from eight different demographic groups. Those groups are uh, students of entrepreneurship, and we've broken that down into three groups, uh, elementary, uh, grades 6 through 8, uh, secondary, high school, grades 9 through 12, and college and universities. Uh, there's three different age groups, age categories uh, of potential winners. There will be a winner from each one of those categories. Uh, a fourth group is uh, baby boomers. Baby boomers are individuals born between 1946 and 1964, uh, as I was. Baby boomers represent the largest demographic in this country right now. And they also represent the greatest challenges to our government in, in supplying the, and taking care of the needs of baby boomers because uh, this is now the third year. This is now the second year uh, or third year that a baby that an, a person age 65 is starting to get Social Security. Uh, I made the decision to start drawing Social Security at age 62. I didn't want to wait. I wanted to make sure the money was there. The money that I uh, paid into the system that I paid into for 50 years, I wanted to start getting some return on my investment. Uh, they uh, so baby boomers are a fourth group. A fifth group are uh, uh, military veterans. The SBA is targeting themselves military veterans and making additional funds, additional programs available for our veterans. Which it's a great thing that they're doing that. Uh, a veteran uh, hopefully returns home and. We know how difficult it is to get a job right now. You know how difficult it is to get a job right now. And remember, create a job. Don't have somebody, don't go out and try to look for one. Create one for yourself. Start a business. Create a job. Uh, military veterans are a very important uh, 
uh, aspect of our of our of our country of our communities, and uh, we have to do whatever we can to help a military veteran take the next step in their life. And then we have a Facebook category, Facebook slash Small Biz, S-M-B-I-Z, or Facebook Small Business Information. If you search for either one of those on Facebook, uh, you will be taken to uh, my Facebook fan page that I created uh, three years ago. Uh, LinkedIn. Uh, three years ago, I also created a LinkedIn um, page group, uh, and it's actually called the Small Business Barter Exchange. Uh, that's a, a seventh category. And the eighth category uh, is uh, Twitter. Uh, I started tweeting not all that long ago. It hasn't been three years for sure. I started uh, tweeting. I don't even think it was, uh, it was less than two years ago. And we now have uh, approaching 10,000 Twitter followers. And uh, very soon uh, that number is going to double or quadruple with some technology uh, that we are going to put into play. So those are eight categories. If you go to small biz, if you go to uh, davidsbarter.com slash entrepreneurs, you'll find that we're playing a game. There will be eight winners in those categories. Uh, and for anybody who uh, subscribes to our managed, uh, optimized bandwidth, from now until the end of the year, $49 of that managed, optimized bandwidth fee will go into a fund that we are calling the 2012 Earned Cash Flow Bonus. 2012 Earned Cash Flow Bonus. So the eight landing pages within those eight demographics that I just mentioned will share all the money that is in that Earned Cash Flow Bonus. So with 10,000 landing pages, 10,000 times $49 is $490,000 if there are 10,000 folks who subscribe to our managed, optimized bandwidth. That's exciting. And how fun. That's why we call it the Entrepreneur's Fun Game. How much fun would it be if you could be one of the winners? <laughs>